Very good to see you. I want to thank everybody who's running. If you're running, give up a hand for everybody running. Because putting your name on a lawn sign is a, is a big deal. So thank all of y'all for putting your name out there and offering, offering your leadership. Now, look, I want to talk to you about another way of looking at the political work that all of us do all the time. Most of us, we're thinking about November. We're going to win in November, and that phrase will be said many times from this stage. And it's true. We do have to win in November. But I want to ask you to consider the possibility that we can use politics to build community. We could use politics to connect with each other. I want you to consider the possibility that it is through politics that you can walk up to a perfect stranger, somebody you don't even know, and talk to them about the most important issues of our time. Through politics, you can invite somebody to the phone bank. You can invite them to the door knock. You can talk to them about what we share in our common future together. Sometimes I think that just talking only about the election is shooting too low. Of course, we have to win the election. We must win the election. But what we really have to do is engage people are all year around, every day and all the time, not only when the election is coming up. So we come and we start knocking on doors and we talk to people about what? The election, right? And then they don't see us again till when? The election. They might come to think that all we care about is the election. But what if we talk to them all the time about passing an ordinance just to get a semaphore on that corner where some kids almost got hit by a car? Or what about we talk to them about writing up to their members of Congress about no war in Iraq? Or what if we talk to them about saying, what about we have health care, universal, single payer for everybody in our country? What if we talk to them about fighting on climate all the time? cleaning up the rivers, cleaning up our lakes all the time. What would end up happening is that the election would be a no-brainer. People would be like, well, of course we're going to be in the election because they would know why. And so what I'm asking us to do is to commit to a permanent community building, something we do every day and all the time, that we don't just get up for the big races like governor and senator and Congress, but we get up for the school board and the library board too. Because those races make and shape the lives of people. Those races make a big difference in how people's quality of life is lived. We need a revolution in activism, a revolution in citizenship activism. This is what we really need. And what we will do is make the election one more very important community affair rather than just a whole big kit and caboodle. Let me tell you, we have to, all of us in this room are leaders. You wouldn't be in this room unless you're a leader. You're the kind of people who folks go to and ask, what you gonna be doing this fall? Who should I support? What is important? You're a leader if you're in this room. What I want you to talk to your folks about is not only the election, but why the election. Why the election is so critical. Because if people miss out on the why, they don't know nothing, and they maybe don't even care about the how. We need you to engage folks on that gut level. We need you to invite folks to be part of this great democracy. I'm going to tell you right now, there is a, perhaps imagine an older lady. She's past retirement. Her children have gone on to their careers. They don't call nearly enough. You knocking on her door inviting her to the call bank might be one of her most important connections that she has with anyone throughout the year. You can be the basis of her neighbors or their friendship groups. I'm going to tell you, there's a young fellow out there, maybe he got his pants hanging off of his butt, and a lot of people see him, and they're scared of him. They're scared of him. But you say, look, man, we need you to knock some doors with us. We'll put you on our campaign. We will pay you. 15 bucks an hour to be on our campaign. And you know what? You might be looking at the next mayor of your town. If you will invest in that kid, if you will believe in him, if you will not 
buy into the stereotypes about him. And you know what will happen if you do this? If we do this, we will not have to pay all kinds of money on polls and focus groups to figure out what's the message. You'll know the message because they will have told you the message. They'll tell you the rent's too high. They'll tell you you got to get some health care. They'll tell you I cannot afford to retire. My pension is getting cut. They will tell you this. You will know this because we will be in touch. We've got to think about what we're doing in a whole different way. It is community we must build. Winning an election is only part of that. Are you committed to it? Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to discount the election. The election is key. But because we have neglected an engaging community, people over time have gone down and down and down in their voter turnout. Something that Republicans know. They know that the more the vote, the, the smaller the electorate gets, that their chances of success go up. But guess what, folks? The smaller the election, the electorate gets, the chances of our success go down. We have to understand that expanding the vote, not suppressing the vote, is the absolute key to our success. We can't just go to the people who we know are going to vote. We have got to go to the people who we know may not vote. We got to go to those communities where the turnout is lower. Is there anybody in this room who will commit to knocking in the precincts where voter turnout is lower than 40%? Look on there. The numbers are there. Go talk to those folks. Invite them to democracy. They will come. In 2014, we saw the lowest voter turnout since Truman, and we got our clocks clean. The road to success and victory is going to talk to people who do not get invited to our democracy, going to talk to people who are ignored, and going to the people who are not included. That is the key, and we have to do it now. We cannot wait till October and September. This thing don't start after Labor Day. It starts yesterday. We have got to engage that right this minute, right this moment. All of us, each of us, has to commit to that grassroots engagement. Because you can ask somebody on the doors a question about health care, about ICE. You can ask them about mass incarceration, and you can ask them about pensions. But you can't ask a TV commercial that. TV commercials don't talk back very well, but people do. And there's no technology that will ever replace you. And we need you to be at the forefront of this thing, bringing the democratic message face to face, voice to voice. Now, let me say to you that this year, my campaign in the 5th Congressional District, anybody here from the 5th, right up in here? I want you all to know we have knocked on 30,000 doors. No, we have knocked or called 30,000 people this year, not last year, since January. We are hitting the ground hard already. We invite all of us in Minnesota to do the same thing. Last summer, we knocked on 50,000 doors. We all got to do this all the time. And we are going to do nothing but accelerate our grassroots engagement as this year goes on. And I'm telling you, some people have said to me, they say, well, Brother Keith, Brother Keith, you know, you're, they say you're in a safe seat. There ain't no such thing as a safe seat, folks. And if you are in a seat where there's a lot of Democrats and you're getting elected by 50, 60, 70 percent, maybe you have even a greater obligation to get out there and be bold and help drive turnout and engage people. We are going to do everything we can to increase turnout so that no matter who wins this endorsement contest, they are going to have an army that is well-trained, that is inspired, that is alive, that is awake and ready to fight. And you know what I'm going to tell you as I begin to close? We cannot afford to fail. We must succeed. And I've been all over this state as the deputy chair of the Democratic National Committee. I've been all over this country been down to Florida, been up to Washington, to California, everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you one thing. When Democrats lose, bad things happen to good people. In the state of Texas and in Missouri, maternal mortality has literally increased. Women are dying because they will not expand Medicaid. Women are dying because they will not provide adequate health care, prenatal care, good nutrition, food, and housing. 
This is a fact, y'all, and we've got to understand that our success will turn on whether somebody gets to develop their mind and seek higher education, get a retirement benefit, survive, eat, all these things. You know, they want to make you have to have a work requirement just to be able to get food stamps nowadays. This is the mentality of the people we're talking about. And also, I just want to close on this. You all may have heard, you all may have heard that, this account, that there's all kind of problems going on in our economy. We have to fight them all, and we are right. But I just want to remind you that there has never been a time since the Great Depression that inequality between the very rich and the rest of us has been wider. You all, we have got a historic challenge in front of us, a historic challenge. Anytime 66% of the jobs in the United States pay less than $20 an hour, you and I got our work cut out for us. We have got to stand up. We have got to fight for the right for a union. We have got to stop these monopolies for getting bigger and bigger. We got to have health care for all, and we're going to do it door to door person by person. Let's get out there. Let's build community and we will win some elections. Hi everybody, my name is Tim O'Brien. I am from Senate District 49, which is a split district, CD3, CD5. Hi everybody, I'm Representative Erin May Quaid. I represent 57A, which is Apple Valley in the northeast portion of Lakeville. Who is ready to endorse for our U.S. 